Hey everybody, Simon here, Project in the Barn. And today we're going to be taking you through uh, another walk around tour of the Lamb Rover after I've cleaned it. <laughs> uh, I've owned it for a couple of weeks now. So it's just going to be a little short video to show you around it, tell you what my honest thoughts are of the car after buying a cheap Lamb Rover Discovery. Um, so we'll take it out for a little drive, show you how it all drives. So I'll take you around it. Now it's all been cleaned up. I've not polished it or anything yet. We've, I got the uh, jet wash out at work. We've got a hot steaming jet wash, um, which was a little bit aggressive on my Land Rover. It's taken a bit of paint off on my wheel arches. Uh, but anyway, it gives me something to fix, doesn't it? So hats on. Um, it's about, I don't know what it is, somewhere between three and five degrees um, here in the UK. So still got my shorts on, but you know. That won't ever change but it is definitely getting colder um so should we show you around the car let's have a look at it shall we so here it is so hopefully a little bit cleaner than when you saw it last time so we've jet washed it all off not polished it um and we've done a few little jobs to it nothing really um needed but there are a couple of sort of sensors I need to replace. Uh, but we'll do them as and when I get to them. But so far, so good. Air suspension all seems to be working lovely. And it does look nice in the black paint. Um, so yeah, looking a lot sharper. I hope you agree than when last we met talking about it. Um, on, I'll take down the back. So here we go. Um, this is where I was saying, so where it's been sort of scratched in the past, um, the jet wash has taken the actual top coating of the paint off. The painted trims was an optional extra. Um, and yeah, so it's obviously been damaged before and the jet wash has just taken the paint off, but it's not too bad because it's black plastic underneath. Uh, the back still, that's where it throws up all the dirt. Uh, but looking... I might take off that tow bar. Underneath this cover here, they all have built into the chassis um, space for a detachable sort of swan neck tow bar. So I hardly ever ever use it, maybe from a bike rack. So I think I'll take that off. It's a bit of a monstrosity. I'm sure it's a perfectly good tow bar, but I'll never use it. So I think that's going to come off. Um, I've got a little reflector lens there to replace because it's broken on the end. And again, down through this side, Hopefully you can see it's looking nice and sharp. This is the other wheel arch I was saying about. Um, yeah, obviously worse than the other side. But again, we'll get to uh, fixing that. I put all new trim clips for these just in case I don't get caught short. Um, yeah, looking a lot better. So let's take you on the inside. This is the, um, oh, I've locked it. Uh, the biggest improvement is my new key. If you've not seen that video, check that out. We reshelled uh, the keys. Um, there it goes to prove it works. <laughs> and here we go inside the car. Um, got my coat there. Let's just pop that in the back. Well, well I'll show you in the back first of all. So he's a seven seater model. And I've just lifted all the seats up uh, to clean them all through. Uh, which look a gazillion times better than it did before. And then on these seats here, these were all scuffed and stained and looking pretty disgusting. And now it's, yeah, looking a lot nicer, a lot more like it should do. I say new rubber mats uh, I got for my birthday last week. Um, yeah, all the door cards all cleaned up nicely and same for in the front yeah all the door cards nicely cleaned up and the interior as well all the black leather seats um, still got the gear lever gator to replace um, yeah all the controls switches and everything else all cleaned up looking a gazillion times better than it did before so let's take you around the other side we'll get it started up shall we and go for a drive all right let me get me uh phone holder and we'll get inside the car all right 
microphone holder in hand. We can get that set up. It goes over the rear view mirror. And here we are. It's looking a million times better than it was before. Yeah, looking good, isn't it? New mats and saved all cards all cleaned up. Slide myself in. So the only I've got one warning light on the dash. Um, switch it on. Let's turn that down. Turn that off. <laughs> Which is for coolant uh, low. It's not. Uh, so I must have a sensor issue there. Four degrees. There we go. Look. So this is fitted with the um, fuel burning heater um, underneath the bonnet, sort of at the front there, um, which is a diesel heater, or Basto heater I think it is, which tends to fire up now. Uh, it did it on me in the first time this afternoon, um, and there was smoke coming out of it. Oh, what the blooming hell is that? And it's, yeah, it's the exhaust from the Wabasto heater. It's a real common thing, but took me a bit by surprise. Um, so that just allows it, the engine to warm up a lot quicker and to get some heat into the cab area. Right, let's take you for a spin, shall we? I say there's no errors, no warnings or anything like that. Obviously, the seatbelt will go off when I put it on. Um, and you'll see down here all of the um, suspension raises and lowers as it should do. So if we sort of push it up now, we have gone to the dash, suspension, off-road, height selected. So um, you can see a picture of it um, in the upright position or the high position. And then I'll put the switch back down to normal road height. And I'll go back down to normal road height. And then we can drop it down lower, uh, but we're not going to do that. And then we're just in um, normal road use, which is high range, and normal road use, which is on this uh, dial over to the left-hand side. So everything else in here works, apart from the heated seat on my side isn't working. So again, something we can have a look at. But otherwise, yeah, really pleased. So if we stick you on the road and go for a little drive, let's do that, shall we? Right. So I've sort of gone down the road a bit from where I live. I thought I was already recording me but I wasn't I turned it off because I couldn't see the screen um, <laughs> I couldn't see if it was recording so I've just lost five minutes of footage of me but it's only me blabbing on as normal anyway so yeah we've not lost anything so um, yeah all I was saying <laughs> in the bit that hasn't been recorded is my um, first opinions after owning this for just a couple of weeks uh, so far so good it's been really really nice uh, to own um, I think I've already said in the first video I did of this car when we first bought it it was really late at night and when we got it off the trailer um, the all the lights were on the suspension had dropped and I really thought I'd bought a bit of a pup uh, but anyway that just turned out to be a low battery um, so a quick charge of the battery overnight the very next day started the old girl up all the fault messages are gone and the suspension went back up to its normal ride height as normal um, and it's been driving absolutely fine ever since the only issue i've had since i've been driving it these last couple of weeks is it's coming up um, with a coolant level low um, when it's not so i assume there's a, a sensor gone um, or something similar so um, yeah, that should be quite a straightforward swap out. Um, I'm hoping it's built into the reservoir, into the header tank, um, because that's a, a common issue on these, is they do crack and let go. So I figured if I just precautionarily swap it out uh, before that potentially breaks or cracks, then um, I can kill two birds with one stone. That's if, if the sensor is inside it, I assume that it is. Um, so we'll get that done. Other than that, it's been absolutely brilliant. It's been driving really nice. It's nice and smooth and quiet. I mean, I do really, really enjoy driving a automatic car. Um, and I wanted, truth be told, to have an automatic uh, discovery. Um, 
but I couldn't find one in my price range. Uh, this is the one that came up and the one that we bought. But I'm really enjoying owning a manual uh, again. Um, so in a car like this, I thought it would sort of take away, but actually I believe it enhances the drive a little bit um, than what an automatic would be like. Um, because this is the 2.7 V6 diesel, um, I think the engine can just needs that bit of extra assistance having a manual gearbox as opposed to the automatic. Uh, whereas in the Discovery 4, where they put the three litre uh, V6 diesel in there, um, that's probably more suited to the automatic gearbox and can handle uh, the extra torque uh, and the power accordingly. Um, but yeah, with the manual I find, it just allows me to use the car more effectively, go through the gears, as opposed to relying more heavily on the automatic gearbox. But yeah, so far, so good. Um, so the reasons I bought a four-wheel drive, in particular a Land Rover, as they say, if you want something that drives like a Land Rover, buy yourself a Land Rover. So that's what I did. Uh, the last four-wheel drive vehicle I owned was a Porsche Cayenne, uh, which was absolutely beautiful. And I sold that when we went into our first lockdown in 2020, uh, thinking that we were gonna head into some sort of recession and nobody's gonna wanna buy a big petrol powered, uh, sort of V6 or V8 uh, powered uh, motor vehicle like a Porsche. Um, so yeah, I sold it and sadly, you know, the opposite has actually happened. Hello. The opposite has happened and second hand car prices have actually gone up through the roof. Uh, which was completely unexpected. Uh, so my concerns weren't found out or w w didn't come true. And um, yeah, I should have kept hold of it because that was a gorgeous car. However, I quite fancied a Land Rover. And so the search started a few weeks ago or a month or so ago, and uh, which led me to this car. And I've got to say, um, it's been absolutely beautiful. Um, for me, let's like say, I mean, don't take this as good buying advice when you're buying a car. Just let me get out of this junction in a minute. This is a bit of a dodgy crossroads. Um, I bought this car sight unseen. It was on eBay here in the UK and a good couple hundred miles away from where I live. So going to view it wasn't really an option. So I was sort of going on the word of the family that owned it before, um, as well as my instinct and the photographs. And I could check the... Uh, vehicle history online with DBLA and so I took the risk and um, I got it transported down to me on a trailer. Um, I've done that quite a few times. I did it with my XK Arla. So <laughs> I do take a bit of a gamble but I do recommend going to view in person any particular car or if it's miles away from you then send someone reputable to go and inspect it for you. But for me, you know, I've been doing it a long time. Uh, I'm happy sometimes just to take the risk. Um, and by doing it that way, I've tended to get my cars considerably cheaper than maybe what you'd pay for them otherwise. Um, I know quite a lot of you have sort of been interested in how much I paid for this Land Rover. Um, and whether you want to know or whether you don't, I don't know. But um, I paid um, considerably less than the book price for the car. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with the purchase. There's, if I was to have bought it at market value, um, it wouldn't give me as much wiggle room with buying it and then potentially doing any problems to the car, paying for it. Um, so being able to buy it considerably cheaper, it leaves me several thousand pounds to, in which I could happily spend, or not happily, you know, I was happy to spend a couple of grand. But there's room to spend a couple of thousand pounds on the car at least. Uh, without the risk of me overspending more than the value of the, of the car in the first place. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, so, yeah, but it drives really, really nice. So the air suspension just wafts over all the lumps and bumps as you go down the road. Uh, and I'm super, super impressed with it. Um, I haven't used, those who remember from the first video, um, sixth gear throws up a transmission fault problem. Uh, but still works in sixth gear, it just comes up with an error. So I've just driven it as a five speed. I haven't gone into sixth gear once. I haven't needed to go into sixth gear once because we don't have um, 
dual carriageways and motorways down where I live, um, it's all single A roads and B roads, there's no need for me to get up into sixth gear or not following another discovery in front of me. Um, so yeah, I've been really happy just to drive it as a six speed. Um, there obviously is a problem there. There's only going to be a sensor or something daft like that. Hello, fellow discovery owner. Um, so yeah, if it is an issue, then it might be something that I'd look at in the future. Uh, but you know me, I don't tend to keep my cars very long. But I do intend to keep this one. Um, certainly to get me through the winter months and then we'll see what happens. Um, but for me, having another four wheel drive uh, just makes perfect sense for my everyday car, for where I work. Um, as you can see, apart from me driving through this uh, small housing estate, uh, we live, although we're down on the south coast, um, we live uh, within the countryside. Um, and leaving for work sort of between six and a half, six of a morning, when it's particularly wet, muddy, frosty outside, um, it's nice to know I'll have the confidence to drive something like this that has a greater potential of getting me to work safely uh, than a normal sort of uh, everyday car, saloon car or whatever. So uh, it's just a bit of peace of mind. Um, I went for this particular model because it's got the electric heated windscreen. Um, and again, you know, I don't have the time in the mornings to really uh, put uh, de-icer on the car and wait for that to defrost. So now I can press the button to the windscreen uh, and after sort of 30 seconds to a minute, it clears the majority of the windscreen off. Uh, it's good peace of mind for me. Um, although I've got to be honest and say with the heated windscreen, uh, there's a few rows that work within the screen, a few that don't. So um, yeah, it's not clear in the windscreen completely. Um, so maybe something to look at. Um, so maybe the connectors or it might be the actual wire inside the screen is broken down. Um, who knows? So maybe that's something we can uh, tend to in the future. Let's go over the crossroads. Those that remember, a couple of years ago, one of my very first videos I did in the XK8, uh, the camera fell off going over that level crossing in the opposite direction, which I found really funny, even if you didn't, but um, yeah, it tickled me. <laughs> so yeah, I am super impressed with the car. Um, I think it's been a really good purchase. I mean, obviously time will tell uh, whether it's been a good purchase or not, um, you know, this time next week I could be crying on the floor because it's gonna cost me thousands of pounds to fix. Um, but hey, that's motoring, isn't it? You know, it's, um, you pay your money, you take your chance. And it can happen to the best of us. You know, I've known new cars to break down. Uh, a good friend of mine at work, he's got a 2019 plate Ford Focus that broke down uh, within the first week of owning it. Um, and trying to get, he went to a garage specifically because of the uh, illusion of the warranty that was in place after spending a considerable sum of money on buying this car. And I'm only to find out within the first week of owning it that the warranty really isn't worth the paper it's written on. And the garage offered him no assistance with the recovery whatsoever. Um, so yeah, beware and do your research when you buy from the garage. And this was a super reputable garage as well. Anyway, I digress. Um, I don't even know what I was talking about. <laughs> I'm just rambling on. Oh, hello, horses. There we go, on a bend in the dark. That's never good, is it? So we're coming up to the uh, road down to where I live now. Like I say, we've just been out for not that far, probably four or five miles, something like that in total. Just to give you a feel for the car and how it's performing. And I'd say for a manual, yeah, really enjoying it. It's, um, I'd say definitely benefits of being a uh, manual with this engine over the automatic. And I'd say if I was to ever reach the dizzy heights of uh, going up to the newer version of Discovery 4, maybe an automatic would be a, a nice option. But for me, on this particular engine, the manual tends to suit it. So it's going to turn off into my lane. And what I might do is just spin the camera around because the sun is right there and it's just going to hit the camera all the way down to the house more than likely if I don't do it yeah probably made 
make it all dark. So I'll just pull over here. We'll just swap positions. Look, excuse my... Right, hopefully you can see me again. Um, we just lost some of the video. When I spun the camera around at the top of the lane, um, I must have inadvertently zoomed in on the screen because the last few minutes is just a real close-up on my face talking nonsense as normal. So anyway... I've just turned back up on the driveway and watched it back and seen that. So we'll just capture that a little bit again. And I'm just rambling on as normal. Basically just to say that um, I'm very pleased with my purchase. The Land Rover is performing really well. Um, it's a great addition to have to the other cars I've got here uh, on the channel. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how it performs and doing a few little upgrades here and there. Um, which will be nice to do. And you know, a bit of variety doesn't hurt anybody does it so yeah super stoked with the Land Rover so stay tuned we'll be doing some stuff to it for absolute sure on a separate note and very quickly the Jaguar XKR um, which is the main reason most of you tune into my channel is to watch the stuff that I do on my Jaguar so thank you so much I super super appreciate all the help and effort and comments that you've been giving me on that car so far and to that end I'm throwing out to you guys to see if anyone there can help me out so uh, from the last video you'd have seen me sort of calling time on the engine um, thinking you know I know there's nothing major mechanically wrong with the engine uh, and just because I just want to move on and do some other stuff to the car. However, um, the thing that's still in the back of my mind, which I can't really test because I don't know how to, frankly, or whether it's possible, is the mass airflow sensor. I've cleaned it. I've cleaned it again. Um, but, you know, I could be cleaning a broken math, which will make absolutely no difference to the way the car runs at all. Um, because although it will still idle when I go down there and start it now, uh, it's still not happy. I don't think the air fuel mixture is still quite right. Um, and yeah, it's not throwing me up any codes um, to say what's wrong. I really don't know what it is. Um, but there's still something not quite 100%. Nothing major. It's going to be something daft. But I'd like to rule out the mass airflow sensor. So if anybody in YouTube land has a spare mass airflow sensor for a Jaguar XKR, year 2000 to 2001, I would love to hear from you um, to a point where I could potentially borrow it, use it, buy it, trade it, whatever the case may be. Um, if you're local, I'd be more than happy to come and collect it. If you live miles away, which is probably the case, I'll happily pay to have it shipped down to me just so I can test it uh, in my car to see if it makes any difference at all um because that's still niggling me in the back of my head and let's say they're about 300 pounds new i don't want to buy um non-genuine parts for the car i only want to buy genuine ones um kind of learnt my lesson there with my coil packs and a few other bits and pieces as they say buy cheap buy twice i'd rather spend the extra money and buy genuine i say a genuine one is almost 300 pounds um and again I i've learnt you know, sometimes you have success buying second hand from breakers, sometimes you don't. You know, you could spend good money buying a used part thinking it's good. I had it on my T5 or the wife's T5 last week, bought an electrical window switch pack, it had broken. Advertised as known good from a, a supplier on a really famous internet auction site. Bought the thing, plugged it in, didn't work. Contacted the seller. And fair play, he'd give me a refund. Um, but there was no apology or nothing like that. So you take your chances. But if any of you have one sitting on your shelf, a mass airflow sensor that you know is good, I would like to hear from you. Um, just get hold of me in the comment section below. You can do that. And if you send me the part number, I can then check the compatibility against mine because mine is a crossover year. And the, the, the one after the 2000 2001 xkr superseded the earlier ones so apparently it will work so if, yeah if you let me know the part number i'll see if it's compatible and let's see if we can just cross that off my list because that's one thing that i think is still niggling me a little bit and i'd like to try and rule that out so if you can help me in any way with that please get in touch either on the comments below or you can email me at jaguars in the barn at gmail.com so that's jaguars in the barn at gmail.com that's uh, the old channel name um, that email is still live you can email me on that 
and let's see if we can uh or if you any out there can help me out i'd really much appreciate it uh but yes there's plenty more to come on the xkr so i'm dead excited for that like i say when i've had a bit of a move around down the barn in the next couple of weeks the XKR will be going inside the barn uh, and then we can work to our heart's content of evenings because it's getting darker earlier here now in the UK. Um, and yeah, there'll be plenty more to come on that. And we're going to sort of go to town on, uh, you know, getting that all ready to go on the road here legally in the UK. And as I think I mentioned, I don't know if it was in this one or the video that I lost just now on re-recording, um, a lot of you have suggested driving up and down my farm lane here uh, which I totally get and probably 30 years ago when I was a bit more rebellious I would have done however um, it is a public highway um, and the car legally needs to be tax insured and MOT to drive up and down that road although it looks like a muddy old track because that's what it is it is a public highway it's an actual road and I would be breaking the law if I was driving it up there so I can't really do that um, which is a bit of a pain but that is the law here so I'm not prepared to break the law uh, in that way so yeah i'd love to do that and it would probably sort a lot of problems out by me driving it a few miles i just can't i can't yet we're not quite there yet but yeah plenty more to come on the jacks so i know that's what pretty much all of you tune in for so anyway thank you so much for watching this video i hope you've enjoyed the little walk round uh the land rover i know a few of you were concerned with me buying the land rover because the state it was in i'm happy reports so far so good the underside is all good underneath all that mud it's cleared away really nicely the chassis is all good uh, i was under there the other day um, and i say trying to trace down a coolant leak uh, and there was no coolant leak it was just a sensor problem uh, but yeah i had a good look underneath the car and it is all happy days so that's it for me um if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel because I know a lot of you watch my video but don't actually subscribe. And the only benefit really of subscribing for you guys is if you hit the notification bell icon. Every time I release a new video, you get an alert. It costs you nothing. It's totally free. Uh, but it just gets my subscribership up, which I really appreciate. So yeah, if you'd like to subscribe, then please hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Give us a thumbs down. If you didn't like the video but if you give me a thumbs down give me a reason why you give me a thumbs down um so yeah i can make any improvements if there's particular things you're not enjoying so that's it for me stop rambling on and i'll see you all again on the next installment on projects in the barn so take care everybody we'll see you soon bye for now bye <laughs>